Giants and Grasshoppers Instead of learning from their mistakes, the children of Israel committed their most grievous sin, the sin of unbelief, when they saw giants and felt like grasshoppers. Numbers 13, verse 26, New King James Version Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. The children of Israel arrived at a place called Kadesh, which was on the outskirts of the Promised Land. Instead of being a symbol of victory, Kadesh became a symbol of defeat and missed opportunities. In disbelief, the people turned away and returned to the wilderness. What was supposed to be an 11-day journey turned into 40 years of wandering. Because of their unbelief, God's people were unable to claim His promise. 1. The Spies Numbers 13, verses 2 to 16, New King James Version. Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran according to the command of the Lord. All of them men who were heads of the children of Israel. Now these were their names. From the tribe of Reuben, Shamua, the son of Zakur. From the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, the son of Hori. From the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. From the tribe of Issachar, Igal, the son of Joseph. From the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Nun. From the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Raphu. From the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi. From the tribe of Joseph, that is, from the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Susi. From the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gemali. From the tribe of Asher, Sether, the son of Michael. From the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, the son of Vophsi. From the tribe of Gad, Guel, the son of Maki. These are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. Moses chose and dispatched twelve men, one from each tribe, to scout the land of Canaan. It's worth noting that, according to Deuteronomy 1, verses 21 to 23, sending spies was the idea of the people, not God. As is often the case, God gave them what they desired despite the fact that it was not what He intended for them. Remember that God had already promised the land to the Israelites. People, however, decided they wanted to see it for themselves. In other words, they desired to walk by sight rather than faith. We have the ability to be the same way. Sometimes we have God's promises, but we choose to have a second opinion. Deuteronomy 1 verses 21 to 23, New King James Version. Look, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear or be discouraged. And every one of you came near to me and said, Let us send men before us, and let them search out the land for us, and bring back word to us of the way by which we should go up, and of the cities into which we shall come. The plan pleased me well, so I took twelve of your men, one man from each tribe. Genesis 12, verse 7, New King James Version. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Deuteronomy 6, verse 23, New King James Version. Then he brought us out from there, that he might bring us in, to give us the land of which he swore to our fathers. Numbers 3, verses 17 to 25, New King James Version. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south, and go up to the mountains, and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not. Be of good courage, and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. 
So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob, near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron. Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zon in Egypt. Then they came to the valley of Eshkol and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. And they returned from spying out the land after forty days. Moses sent the spies into Canaan with a set of instructions to learn everything they could about the land that God had promised them. They had been sent on a reconnaissance mission. What they brought back gave them ample reason to believe in God and settle in the land. Numbers 13 verses 26 to 31, New King James Version. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. The spies returned to camp, where they delivered their report and displayed their samples. However, as they undermined their report with descriptions of warlike giants and strong fortified cities, verse 28 adds, Nonetheless, the land was everything God had promised, but it was not without its difficulties and obstacles. Caleb, one of the spies, had to quiet the crowd in order to deliver the minority report. Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. The majority, on the other hand, spoke up. We are unable to confront the people because they are stronger than we are. They seemed to have forgotten their God the plagues he had sent upon Egypt and the sea he had split in two. Suddenly, the people realized they lacked the strength to complete this task. Unbelief can be devastating to our sense of self-worth as well as our perception of God's power. The people made a fatal mistake. They looked at the giants and at themselves, but something was missing. They didn't turn to look at God. We have the wrong picture when we leave God out of the picture. Caleb and Joshua saw the same truths and realities as everyone else, but they saw them through very different lenses. Some people only see the dangers and difficulties in a situation, while others see God's promises and power. When God gets involved, grasshoppers can give giants a tough time. Obstacles are simply subtly concealed opportunities for God's power to be put to use. 2. The Strife Numbers 14 verses 1 to 4, New King James Version. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, Let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Numbers 14.1 describes a public outpouring of shock and dismay. They were out of control, overly emotional, and weeping. The murmuring and complaining then resumed. They erroneously blamed Moses, then God. They desired to appoint a new leader to lead them back to Egypt. What did they expect to happen if they returned to Egypt? Numbers 14 verses 5 to 12, New King James Version. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. 
but Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we passed through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me with all the signs which I have performed among them? I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. Moses, Aaron, Joshua, and Caleb did everything they could to advocate for God. It was ineffective. The majority was ready to stone the minority. As a result, God's glory cloud descended. The Lord spoke to Moses, offering a fresh start and a second chance, similar to the golden calf incident. But Moses begged the Lord not to exterminate them. Exodus 32, verses 9 to 14, New King James Version. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and indeed it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And I will make of you a great nation. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God, and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians speak and say, He brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, and relent from this harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self, and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of I give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord relented from the harm which he said he would do to his people. Moses was doing what every one of us should do. When a problem comes up, we must trust in the character of God and rest in the attributes of God. God is at work to bring about good. Romans 8 verse 28, New King James Version And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Numbers 14, verses 20-33, to 33, New King James Version Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word, but truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have put me to the test now these ten times, and have not heeded my voice, they certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley. Tomorrow turn and move out into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complain against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness, all of you who were numbered according to your entire number, from twenty years old and above. Except for Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun, you shall by no means enter the land which I swore I would make you dwell in. But your little ones, whom you said would be victims, I will bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. But as for you, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. And your sons shall be shepherds in the wilderness forty years, and bear the brunt of your infidelity, until your carcasses are consumed in the wilderness. Moses besought God to forgive the rebellious people 
and the Lord did, but they would pay a price for their unbelief. Because of their unbelief, this generation, except for Caleb and Joshua, would not enter the promised land. They were concerned about their children, but God promised that those who rebelled would never see the promised land. God sentenced the people to 40 years of wilderness wandering. Each year represented a day on which the spies scouted the land. Because of their parents' sins, the children would also have to suffer for 40 years. Even today, this is frequently the case. Children frequently pay the price for their parents' sins and poor decisions. 3. The Struggle Take a look at what follows. The people admitted to having sinned, but they refused to repent. By deciding to take the land, they sinned even more. Numbers 14, verse 44, New King James Version. But they presumed to go up to the mountaintop. Nevertheless, neither the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord nor Moses departed from the camp. This was not true repentance, but rather arrogance on their part. They believed they could avoid the consequences of their unbelief while still entering the land. Moses forewarned them that they would not be successful. They dared to go to the top of the hill to attack the Amalekites and Canaanites in reckless arrogance. The Ark of God, which represents our Lord Jesus Christ, was not carried with them, nor was Moses, God's appointed leader. When you fight a battle without the Lord Jesus Christ or God's blessing, you are doomed to fail. In Hebrews 3 verses 15 to 19, the New Testament provides a commentary on today's lesson. Because of their unbelief, the children of Israel did not receive God's promises and did not enter the promised land. Instead of seeing God's promises and power, they saw giants and felt like grasshoppers. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and have trusted Him with your eternity, you can believe His promises and trust Him in every circumstance of your life. Hebrews 3 verses 15 to 19, New King James Version. While it is said, Today, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion.